We're going up the valley behind me. It's not much more than about a quarter of a mile up there, I'm guessing, maybe a little bit further. And it's a spot that we call the scrape tree. And I would not normally hunt these open spots like that at this point in the rut, where November 8th, normally you start getting away from the open areas. But this is all standing corn, so technically it's not even an open area. I mean, it's, it's cover all the way through there. But it is a feeding area. The does aren't coming out to food very much during this phase of the rut. They try to stay away from the open areas where all the bucks are chasing them around. But I'm seeing on my trail cameras that this year is a little bit different. Uh, the bucks are still hitting scrapes. And the does, it seems like they're still coming out a little bit more than I would expect based on what I'm seeing on camera. So we're going to try this spot. The biggest problem I've got right now on the farm is I've only got one buck that I'm really focused on. And that deer lives on this ridge to my right. If you pan around there, you can see he lives up there. And it's a big area. And uh, I don't really know exactly where he's at most of the time. And he hasn't been showing up on camera at all, daytime or nighttime. We saw him a few days ago when we went in and hung a stand. I talked about that uh, yesterday. But I don't want to burn that out. I know how to kill that deer. It, it, you know, it doesn't really lend itself well to uh, what we do here, you know, producing video content for our viewers. But the way to kill that buck is just wait until November 20th. Don't even go up there um, and then just hunt that corn. You know, move the blind around, get it on some fresh corn, you know, stuff that hasn't been eaten yet. And he's going to be in that corn when the rut tails down. Uh, it's just the way it works. I've had so much luck doing that. You know, sometime after the 20th of November, 22nd, clear up until the shotgun season comes in here in Iowa. The bucks come off the rut and all they want to do is eat. And they do it a lot during the daylight. Um, I think he'd be killable up there then. The more we mess around up there, it seems like the more likely we are to, you know, put him off any kind of daylight movement. But in the meantime, we're going to go to the scrape tree. And then there's this other buck that's living on maybe uh, on the ridge to the east. I've gotten a few pictures of him there and I've gotten some pictures of him on the scrape. And uh, I would shoot that deer. Um, you know, long story short, it's a deer that I know well enough to know that I would shoot him. And uh, he's, uh, he could be around. That's all we're, we're kind of hanging on. And you don't know when something else could pop down in there too, for that matter. But um, it's more of a, a time of resting the spot where the buck that I am hunting is living. You can't just relentlessly pursue a deer and then just hope that somehow he doesn't figure out that you're after him. Uh, they're really good at figuring it out. So you got to give it a break. And that's what we're doing right now. And I don't know how long this break is going to last. Um, we'll give it a few days, then we'll try to figure out a, a, a way to go back after him. So that's it. We're heading up the valley. Scrape tree's a cool spot. I got some, some uh, good history there. You know, we've had some good hunts there. And uh, hopefully we can show you some action this evening. Hoyt's Bowhunting Whitetails is brought to you by Redneck Blinds, Coat of Silence Apparel, Hunt Stand Pro Whitetail, Fuse Accessories, Elevate Tree Stands, B3 Releases and Broadheads, and Hoyt. We've got an hour and 15 minutes left in the hunt. I've seen uh, some turkeys and a fawn. I'm not sure if Carson got that fawn on camera. I would think that the deer would crisscross this valley going from the ridges on either side back and forth because in this kind of country, 
the deer bed on these points. So I'm going to give you a really quick uh, rundown on how deer use this type of terrain. As long as we're sitting here looking at it, might as well talk about it. I can see one, two, three, four, five in front of me, five points sticking out from the main ridge complex on either side. The deer bed on those points, and really all they are is just, I mean, I guess we can show you on the hunt stand map here too what a point is, but it's just an extension of the ridge that sticks out to the side. And deer love to bed on those because they can see really well. And if they bed on the correct side, then they can smell any danger behind them and see any danger below them on the downwind side. So they tend to bed on the downwind side of the point. So as I'm looking up at this one to my right, wind is coming from the north, so it's coming down the valley. The deer are more likely to be bedded on this side, the downwind side of that point. And uh, it helps you in a lot of ways to anticipate movement patterns. We're down in this valley. The food usually in this country is gonna be in the valleys. And a lot of times it's up on top too. You'll have, as the, as the ridge starts to widen out, you'll have farm fields up on top. So the deer can feed in two directions and they generally bed in the middle. Uh, this time of the year, today being November 8th, it would be best to be up on one of those points. The tricky part is uh, you have to be able to get into those spots without the deer knowing. And if there's wind, you can pull it off in the morning, but it's super hard to get into these bedding areas in the evenings or for an evening hunt at midday, unless it's really windy and pretty thick because uh, you know the deer are set up in a way that they can detect danger very well. So it just makes it hard to approach. Those are the best spots uh, for hunting the rest of the rut in this area, these bedding points. Any travel routes in between can be good, like even where we're sitting. Like I said, we, we can look over a pretty good sized piece of country and we can see if any deer are crisscrossing this valley going from one point to the other. And it's gonna be bucks that do that. You know, they're just checking out the bedding areas. They're looking for the does. The other thing that we notice here is there's usually a draw or a, or a valley that runs up between these two bedding, between any two of the bedding points. And there's contour lines that go up around that draw. And generally, that's how most of the deer will travel. They'll follow the contour around, so there'll be a funnel at the top. I like to hunt those ditch funnels because they're usually pretty easy to get to. You can come up into them from below uh, a lot of times I'll take a chainsaw and I'll clear those out so I can sneak into them really easily from below without making any noise. And then you get a more predictable wind. The higher up the slope you go, the more predictable the wind. So those are just a couple of patterns to keep in mind for hunting this ridge and bluff country. I'm going to go back to hunting here and uh, I'll bring you a final update in about uh, half an hour or so on uh, what else we see this afternoon. down to the last half hour and nothing has changed since my last update. No deer. Uh, really the only thing that's changed is the wind died completely down to nothing. Boy it is dead. You hear a pin drop here. Uh, so if anything does come out we'll show it to you here at the end and uh, Still hoping, I'm still looking up in these bluffs for something to crisscross through there, but it doesn't look too encouraging for the rest of the afternoon. I'll be out again tomorrow, November 9th, and uh, still good. I mean, I've had good hunts, you know, clear up until the 13th. So it's not like we're hitting that, that mid-rut low anytime soon. We've probably got, you know, four or five days so the weekend should be good uh, last few days of this week 
potentially could be good. Uh, so good luck and uh, appreciate you watching. And we'll see you right back here again tomorrow.